We're going to turn now to our GMA cover story, the challenge of raising kids during a pandemic. COVID is rarely causing serious illness in children, but over 10 million U.S. kids have tested positive since the start of the pandemic. Ariel Reshef is here with the story. Good morning, Ariel. Good morning to you, George. As you know, the pandemic can feel like it is ever evolving and like the goalposts continue to move for parents. So doctors we talk to say understanding the data surrounding kids and COVID can provide important perspective. More than two years into the pandemic, many parents are coping with a crippling mix of confusion. My biggest anxiety right now is how to keep them safe, especially when everything is constantly changing. Exhaustion and fear. Being in constant defense mode is exhausting. Unprecedented case counts among children and rising pediatric hospitalizations are stoking concerns. But research suggests compared to adults, severe COVID infection among kids is relatively uncommon. And though pediatricians say it's not time for parents to let down their guard, there is reason to be hopeful. We do see children get hospitalized, but comparatively to Delta, we are seeing more children, when you look at percentages, have really great outcomes, meaning they have a mild symptom of a runny nose or a cough. And that is why it's up to every parent to decide what level of risk am I comfortable with? While pediatric cases spiked to more than 1 million last week, pediatric hospital admissions dropped 11 percent after a surge of more than 500 percent over the last six weeks. CDC data shows that children from birth to 17 have the lowest number of total hospitalizations from COVID compared to any other age group. Most of the rise in pediatric hospitalization just has to do with a denominator. That that is, if tens of thousands of children are being infected every day, the total number hospitalized will go up. The CDC estimates roughly one out of every 1,000 children 17 and under who contract the virus will require hospitalization. Experts estimate that for vaccinated children, that risk is significantly lower, just one out of every 100,000. New research shows the Omicron variant, which accounts for almost 100 percent of new cases, is proving less severe than the Delta variant. And for many children, the symptoms are comparable to other respiratory viruses. Many of these children are being admitted for things that they're admitted for for other viruses, such as dehydration, oxygen support like we would see in flu or RSV. So we're seeing it act very similar to many other viruses. And as for transmission in schools, it's actually lower than most places in the community. Experts say these data points can help families strike a critical balance as we learn to navigate our new reality. Do you foresee a point at which pediatricians say the risk benefit um, analysis is on the side of relaxing those regulations? The science is moving so quickly that the recommendations are constantly changing, and that is really hard for parents to hear. I do believe by spring we're going to get better answers, but that is a hard wait for parents. There is light at the end of the tunnel, but we have to be patient. And doctors say it's important to remember that kids can transmit this virus to other vulnerable children or children who are immunocompromised, as well as adults who are at higher risk for severe illness. An important factor to weigh as you make those critical decisions for your own family. Sure George. is. Okay, Ariel, thanks very much. Let's get more on this now from Dr. Jan Ashton. So what are the big things parents need to keep in mind? Well, I think first, we have to follow the science here. The CDC recommends that every child five and over get vaccinated. Clinical trials have shown those vaccines to be safe and effective. And then I think it's really important to, again, based on the data, based on the science, keep that perspective. Right now in the pediatric population, the risks of COVID-19 are overall low. Look at the numbers, 0.1 to 1.5% of all pediatric cases result in hospitalizations. It's way, way lower than that for COVID-related deaths. Of course, one COVID-related pediatric death is too many. But when you look at particularly like the classroom environment, that's one of the safer places to be overall based on the data that we so have. So classrooms right are safe. What about what about play dates? What about athletics? Well, so here's where I think parents need to take a holistic view. And remember, they need to be not only concerned with physical health, but mental health and psychological health and development as well. Um, and I think then when you look at that, parents can look at some things to help stratify that risk. So first of all, you do want to know what is the local rate of infection in your area. If you're in an area that's coming out of this peak, 
things might be safer rather than if you're still in the thick of it. Obviously, environment matters. You want to choose outdoor play dates or settings whenever possible, weather permitting. Masking in crowded indoor areas still being recommended right now. And then we have to lead by example because children, particularly younger children, but adolescents as well, will follow our lead, particularly our psychological and behavioral lead. And if we look panicked and paranoid and frightened at every turn, they unfortunately So, so given that us. overall, is it time to loosen up on kids? Well, listen, I think as we heard those pediatricians say, we're going to learn more by the spring, but we're two years into this. So right now, if you have a child with a compromised immune system, you want to take more precautions than others. But otherwise, it's about learning how to live with this virus. Jen Ashton, thanks very much. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.